Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now. Happy New Year, everybody. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger of the Dragon's Den. Also created a new blog called Inside the OAA, in which it covers um, every single OAA team in the entire league. And also throughout the rest of the, and also insight on opinions heading into that. And also one of the hosts of Between Terminas on ON TV. Of course, some happy new year to everybody. Hope everybody's um, enjoying, braving the elements of the um, weather coming up. But we've had a couple of things going on during the Christmas break. We've had holiday tournaments. Um, we've had um, some of the, um, an interesting article by Kobe Bryant of the Los Angeles Lakers saying that European players are um, more skillful than um, prof- than American ball players, you know, and then also you got um, and also you got um, a lot of, you got, also we had some wrestling invitationals from West Bloomfield and Rochester Adams that occurred over the weekend. Um, but let's go first, let's go with the um, interesting comments and of course also in my new blog, you know, I wrote about Jim Harbaugh and his impact, and he should, and I think he should be looking at a couple OA players. And I also think Michigan State football coach Mark D'Antonio should also be looking at a couple football players as well. Heading in, I'm a couple OA players um, that I think would be very interesting and interesting fit for um, some of these players. So we're going to go football first, of course. Um, football season, of course, ended. I was very disturbed by Scott Bernstein who of the Oakland Press who wrote on his blog, Bernie's Tweets, you know, that that um, he wrote his top 10 football players heading into 2015. You know what? It's January, for God's sakes. You know what I mean? You got all summer to write about these players. You know what I mean? It's... Is we haven't even went, went to spring yet, for God's sakes, and you're writing about football already? Jeez Louise. I mean, like, I understand you want to get hyped up and everything, but still, it's too early to think about football. You know what I mean? You know, it, it's, it's, you're still in basketball season, wrestling season. You know, you still have to deal with baseball season, softball season, track season. I mean, like, lacrosse season. I mean, those other sports, you know what I mean? I know I understand a lot of people say football is king. You know what I mean? And it is. But but to write about players early, you know what I mean, it's dangerous because, you know, you still have kids that are that are that are playing other sports that are gonna be real re- I mean like they're just focused on their sport right now. Not just um not just football, you know, and there were some interesting um, names on that list, you know what I mean, that I've um looked at and of course, you know, Trishan Jackson, he's one of the players. I think he I think he's fitly right right there at number three on his blog. Um and um Nolan Erickson of Clarkston's on there, you know what I mean? So you know, but it's like I said, it's early, you know what I mean? And you got all summer, you know what I mean? You got all summer to basically look at these teams to get a good idea what they have. I mean, like like I said, if I'm Scott Bernstein I'm laying low from football right now because we just got done with the season in November. And, yeah, but all December, January, February, March, April, May. I mean, I would find you. I'm probably starting talking football probably in June. You know, that's what I'm saying, you know what I mean, to some of these experts. Now, speaking of football recruits, of course, um, of course, everybody knows about the big day, big coaching, um, Higher at Michigan with Jim Harbaugh going over there. You know, when I look at that move for Jim Harbaugh on Michigan, I think it's a good move because here's a guy that's going to bring instant recruits over to Ann Arbor, you know, and he, I mean, like, they only got six recruits over there. Unfortunately, there's none in the OA right now. I mean, it could change because, you know, one of the top players that, that um, everybody's been looking at, of course, is – um. John Kelly of Oak Park, and he's one of those guys that I think would look perfect, I think, in either maize and blue or even green and white, you know, heading into the year. I mean, like, everybody's been high on Mike Weber, but 
let's look at it from this way. Mike Weaver's already made his mind up. He's going to Ohio State. I'd be really surprised if he changed his college commitment back to Michigan. He did. He committed from Michigan once Brady Hill got fired. And here's a guy that, and here's another guy like in John Kelly. You know what I mean? He's got. He's a Weaver, Mike Weaver, less player. You know what I mean? He can be. He can. He can. He has the skill set. I think to match up with what Mike Weaver has. And and I'm surprised that nobody's talked about him. You know what I mean? I know he's gonna make a decision by signing day, of course. Um, it's coming up in February. But there's some other players around the OA that I think that both Michigan, Michigan State, all these other schools have got to look at too. You know what I mean? I know a couple of them have already committed already to other schools. Like um, I'm not sure where Maddox or um, where Adam or Nick Maddox going, where Adam Maddox going. I mean, I know his brothers at Western Michigan, but um, I think his brother Adam would look perfect. Would would be. Perfect if he played alongside his brother. Maybe he'd go to Central. You know what I mean? Dan Eno's a good coach up there at Central. And I mean, like, um, but um, there's a couple kids that um, I think would look would look would do very well in Division One schools that I think that these teams need to look at. I mean, like, I look at Michigan State, Michigan. You know what I mean? Or and all the other schools. You know, a couple of these kids in the OA. Um, I think a perfect perfect fit would be when you look at um when you look at it is um. I think Cole Chewins, you know what I mean? He's one of those players that um, you know, he's going he committed to my he committed to Miami, you know, but it but he could change his mind, you know what I mean, like in a heartbeat. Because I know Michigan State just offered him a scholarship to play over at East Lansing. And, you know, I think if you look at it from a I mean like from a football team standpoint, if you get offered by a Big Ten school, you go play in the Big Ten. You're a Big Ten caliber player. You know what I mean? Well, Chewins, of course, Miami of Ohio. Of course, um, I didn't think Miami of Ohio is that good. You know what I mean? For starters, you know, I think that, you know, I think it'd be, an, I mean, but I guess Chewins likes the situation over there in Miami of Ohio. You know what I mean? But um, but if he goes to Michigan, if he changes his commitment to go to Michigan State, it wouldn't surprise me because it would be because you would have a tight end type player. He's had a heck of a senior campaign over there at Clarkson. He's led into a state championship. I think when you look at it here, I think he's one of the guys you got to look at, I think, for a good scholarship. You know what I mean? Would be a perfect give me a perfect opportunity. You know, Kelly would be one, Chewins two. You know, other players I look at possibly, heck, I would look at DJ Zula himself. You know what I mean? DJ Zula, the quarterback at Clarkson. And you know, a lot of people are going to compare him to Sean Shred of Lake Orion. Um... I mean, like, the problem with Suzuka is his size. He's got the heart. He can throw the ball down the field, and he's a successful, and he's won two, two state championships. And I'm surprised that nobody is looking at him. No Division One schools are looking at him, you know, and that's, and that's a shame because, you know, a lot of people, I felt personally when I'm sure, when Sean Charette, you know, he won a state title, of course, he, you know, he had a nice senior season. You know, I was surprised he didn't go D1. And it's kind of shocking. You know what I mean? If I would compare DJ Zazula's numbers to Alex Malzone at Michigan right now, I think Zazula, in my opinion, is a better quarterback than Alex Malzone. And that and that's saying something right there. And, you know, Malzone is one of the top quarterbacks in the state. You know, but I still think DJ Zazula is right up there. And... I'm and I'm disappointed in these Division One schools that they would not recruit DJ Zazula to play in Division One schools. I think he's I think he would be a perfect fit for a um, for a team that would who, who has a small size quarterback. You know what I mean? I think he would be perfect. You know, for a new regime. You know what I mean? Because you know there's a couple new regimes over there. You know, I think Florida would be perfect. I think because like because I know Jim McClellan, their coach over there, like to run him. A spread type situation. I think Zazula can run a spread offense. I think it would be a perfect fit for him. You know what I mean? But that's just my opinion. Another running a running back here. I'm a little surprised it's not getting looks. Is um is a Matt Krause of Lake Orion because you know Krause has had a heck of a he had a big year last year senior season. You know, unfortunately the Dragons didn't go to the playoffs, but here's a guy that run rushed for nearly two thousand yards and and for him not to go. To possibly, and for him not to get a scholarship instead, preferring to walk on, you know, it's disappointing right there, I think. You know, there's a lot of other players 
in the league. Of course, Ob Jackson going to Western Michigan. That's an interesting move right there. I'm curious to see how he does over there in Kalamazoo. Um, when you look at it, and then there's some. I know Clarence Baraklas, Um I think that um, he's another good running back. I think he should be a D1 school. He's a hard runner. He works hard. I mean, like, I think he would be perfect to play, I think, in a Division One school, you know. But also got D2 schools, you know, D3 schools. I'm not picking, not picking on them, but I'm just seeing some of these players should be D1 or D1 caliber players. Um, another guy that I mentioned, you know, that could that was very disappointing that didn't get a scholarship offer, you know, a Division One scholarship offer was Joe Platts of Stony Creek. You know what I mean? Platts, he's a solid linebacker, talented player. And to see him not get a D1 offer, it's disappointing to say the least. But, you know, I mean, like, um, he had a heck of a senior year for coach um, Brad Zuby. Um, he was the anchor of that Cougar defense as we had, I mean, like, last season. And, um, you know, but it is what it is. You know, I'm kind of surprised that Eddie Wilson at West Bloomfield, he got offered a scholarship early in the year to go play at Bowling Green. You know what I mean? So... I'll be curious to see how he does over there. And um, other players, you know what I mean? I'm not bashing Division two, Division um, three levels or, like, um, because they're all great schools, you know what I mean, that the, some of these um, senior senior players are going. But um, I still think a couple of those players should have been, like, Division one talent and capable talent over there at um, over at um. You know, and like, and of course, a lot of people are going to go after probably John Kelly, who's the big fish over there at Oak Park. I think Junior McMullen over there at Oak Park as well. He, I think in my opinion, he should, he should have got a Division One scholarship as well because he's a very good linebacker, very good ball player. You know, he's very talented, of course. Um, earlier in the year, of course, um, hearing the news about Desmond Kirkpatrick um, committing to Louisville f- to play his college, and he's a senior next year. To me, it's kind of a surprise because when you look at Kirkpatrick, um, this year he really didn't play the competition that that Farmington was supposed to to play with. You know what I mean? I'm kind of disappointed in that situation where Farmington ended up running the table. Now Farmington's up in the white for football, you know, and now they and Royal Oak switched, and those two are going to play each other week one and. You look at here at Farmington's schedule, they got to play. They're going to be playing Adams, Harrison, um, Southfield. Southfield, of course, led by, of course, they're going to be a very talented team again, led by Matt Falcon. Um, I look at um, I look at Farmington, you know what I mean? I think Farmington might not make the playoffs next year in 2015. I just don't think they'll make the playoffs because when you look at what they've got in the schedule, I know they're talented. they got David Reese, they got them. Um, Desmond Kirkpatrick, you're replacing a quarterback, a running back. That's going to be tough. And then your schedule's absolutely brutal because you got to play Southfield, Adams, Harrison, and then that Week 9 crossover game. And if it's, I'm thinking, I'm thinking if it's Oxford, I think Farmington's in a lot of trouble because when you look at the Wildcats, they're well coached. Bud Riley's done a good job with their I know they're replacing a lot of key players, but they run a system in place over there. You know, so I just don't think Farmington right now would be able to make the playoffs as we um, head into the um, later in the year. I mean, like, that's what I'm thinking in the fall. You know what I mean? Like, but I'll do my football um, projections in a later day, later months. You know what I mean? My thoughts. But when I look at recruits, I mean, like, um, I think Trishan Jackson will no doubt get a um, get a big time D one offer. I think a Division one school will offer him, um, whether it's for football or basketball, because he's that good in both sports. I mean, but there have been a lot of questions with Jackson, um, and um, I'll probably um, get with Ronald with um, Ronald Bellamy, their coach over at West Bloomfield, over. Um, where Jackson will play next year. You know, a lot of pe- speculation have been about him is could they move Jackson back to wide receiver or he could play a quarterback. You know what I mean? He is a dual threat quarterback. I mean, when you look at what Jackson's done, I mean, like, he's, he's done a magnificent job as a dual threat quarterback 
But also, when let's remember when he got hurt in 2013, he played wide receiver, and it ended up being a huge coup for the Lakers. You know what I mean? Since they could move a, a skill player of theirs to the um, running back position, to the um, quarterback position, and they could fix, you know, it could move Jackson to the wide receiver position. There's no doubt about it. I think he will get a scholarship offer heading into um, 2015. And um, when it comes to National Signing Day, it'll be very interesting, you know what I mean, to see what um, I think Jim Harbaugh will get some OA recruits. I think Mark D'Antonio will get some OA recruits. Of course, um, let's remember Mark D'Antonio. He got a, he's got a couple OA recruits in there, of course. Matt Sokol and also um, David Beadle is also there. You know, of course, um, Sokol went to Rochester Adams. And um, David Beadle, of course, played at Clarkston. So... We'll just see what happens heading in along here. I still think the big fish is John Kelly right now. I don't think Mike Weber is going anywhere anytime soon. I think he's really solid at Ohio State. Um, there's some other players in the state that could be him. Um, of course, we know Alex Malzone and um, David Cole are already enrolled in Michigan. I mean, like, but um, like I said, um, I still think that um, with Jim Harbaugh's team over there in Ann Arbor, I think he's. The question that I have is who is going to be Harbaugh's quarterback? Is it going to be, is it going to be, is it going to be, um, is it going to be Malzone? Or is it going to be somebody else? You know what I mean? Of course, let's remember, um, i got to remember the name of Warren Diaz South, um, former quarterback. I know he made a lot of headlines um, when he um, had some issues. I mean, like over there at Warren Diaz South, um, i got to remember his name. It'll get on me, you know, it'll get on me. Um, but um, but like I said, I think right now, I know Scott Bernstein's been hyping up on Malzone, but um, I'm not sold on Malzone as a, um, as a quarterback. I still think, personally, in my opinion, I still think DJ Zazula is a better quarterback than Alex Malzone. All right, now, everybody, um, my final thoughts there, I think that um, what's going to happen is I think that um, it's going to be a huge quarterback competition over there in Ann Arbor, so we'll see what happens. Speaking of in East Lansing, of course, we all know Connor Cook's still going to be starting quarterback in East Lansing. Question is going to be the defense, especially with Pat Narduzzi leaving East Lansing, and that's going to be an interesting situation over there um, with their recruits, you know. But I, but like I said, Michigan State still got a solid program. They're still going to be a very very good program for a very long time, and I don't think Michigan State is not going anywhere anytime soon in recruiting. I don't think Ohio State's going anywhere anytime soon recruiting. But I would I would like for all these teams, these especially the big three, to look at to look at away players, you know what I mean? Like um a lot of these other kids, because there's some talent here in the state of Michigan, especially in this league. And um that's something I look at as we head into twenty fifteen. Okay now everybody you know when we come back on um, we're gonna talk about a very specific, very debatable thing, of course, AAU basketball and the OA. Of course, there was like some major headlines from my NBA star about it here on OA Now. We want a habitat home. I love working on my habitat home. Soy dueño de una casa de habitat. My neighbor is a Habitat homeowner. Being a Habitat homeowner has changed our lives. My mortgage payment for Habitat is less than what I paid for rent. Habitat for Humanity of Oakland County currently has homes available with mortgage payments lower than most rent payments. If you or someone you know needs decent and affordable housing, call 248-338-1843 or visit our website at habitatoakland.org. Welcome back to Only Now. I'm Sammy Termina, blogger of the Dragon's Den, also blogger of Inside the OAA, and also one of the hosts of Between Terminas on ON TV. Um, we got one of the most interesting comments. A lot of major headlines, of course, making around the league is um, what NBA Lakers shooting guard Kobe Bryant mentioned about AAU basketball, and he said an interesting comment after the um, Lakers lost to the Memphis Grizzlies in a ESPN interview, he said that, um, quote, European players are more skillful than an American 
NBA and pl- American players. And, you know, a lot of, I mean, like, it's an interesting debate when it comes, especially with the AU system that, um, that he claims that, you know, parents are controlling the things. Yeah, I probably would say that, but, um, but I think it's a, um, it's a tough situation when you look at the situation that is, um, brewing over there when it comes to this. I mean, I know it's a sensitive subject when you look at AAU basketball, but some of the things Kobe Bryant said, of course, like he said that, quote, that NBA play, um, you're, uh, the reason why the San Antonio Spurs are successful every year is because they have European players who are developed their game at an NBA, um, developed their game early on. They play, and I know Kobe Bryant played in Italy. You know what I mean? He has played some time in Italy, but, um, but I'm kind of surprised that um what he made about the um that there were Amer- that European skill players are better than American players. I think it's a little disturbing to me in a sense because like there have been players that have been success successful in the AU circuits. I mean, like you look at a player like LeBron James who's been there. Of course, Brandon Jennings has been successful there, you know. When I look at an American um American basketball player, you know, some of them will do AU, some of them will do other sports, but I don't think all American basketball players are that bad. Yeah, I mean, like, um, but I think that some of the things he, que- he questioned, um, the players' attitudes, you know, thinking that they're all hype, they're all pl- all good players, you know, sometimes you're good, sometimes you're not. And it is basically one of those things that, um, he attacked and also he attacked like um, the parents basically like pr- thinking that they could be profiting off their kids. You know, a lot of things, you know, I don't know the true facts of it. I really don't know what the true facts of it. But I know when I look at AU coaches in playing AU basketball, there's going to be players that play AU basketball just to get them better. You know what I mean? The uh, quite, I mean, like, you got a structure in place, you know, but, um, I mean, like, I've got experience from both sides, especially, um, sitting down with current Dallas Cowboy, um, football player and Lake Orion great Jeff Heath, you know, AEU basketball, it, it can be a good thing, you know what I mean? A lot of p- parents and players, they pay a lot of money to play, to travel. To go to go see these these kids play. I mean, like sometimes it'll get you noticed. Um, it'll get you noticed. It'll get you like get your name out there. But um, when you look at when you look at organized basketball or organized sports, of course, there's a lot of success. You know, when you look at the stuff that's going around, and um, you know, and I know I know a couple a, a lot of a lot of kids play. Organized AU basketball. You know what I mean? Like, you look at kids like, um, I mean, like, I know there's some top kids around here that play it and to get themselves better. It also brings colleges involved into the mix because, because I think, you know, when you look at the influence that AU coaches has brought in to the player, I think that, um, it'll help them out a lot. But also, you know, sometimes it can be a disaster. I mean, like, when you play AU ball. I mean, like you know, it get it takes away an opportunity for those who um who don't do AU to get like a scholarship to go play a sport that you love or you care, and that to me is a problem. And when I look at um, I know when I look at a lot of the um AU talent, of course um there is a lot of like I don't I know you got to look at, also look at AU coaches. I know a couple coaches that folk that coach the AU circuit during the um spring and summer months and also um and also like um does very very well in other sports i look at oak park and southfield lathrop as two of those places of course um lathrop's girls basketball team coach from michelle jackson marshall of course um i looked at um interesting um interesting thing about antoinette miller of course antoinette miller was one of the um she was a very good player at ferndale her freshman year you know what i mean to go alongside Mona Ellis, I mean, like, over there for Eric Lloyd. And then, of course, the next year, of course, she's, and she, of course, the next year, she transfers over to, um, over to Lathrop. Of course, it happened also with Sabrina Cotton. Also, she also 
transferred, she transferred out of Troy to go to Lathrop, you know, because it's that connection to the AAU circuit, you know, because Cotton played AAU ball for Coach Michelle Jackson Marshall, and you look at Antoinette Miller, she played AAU basketball for Antoinette Miller, and of course, that's one of the main reasons I think why Southfield Lathrop's girls basketball program has been good every year, is because they get those players, you know, to come, I mean... I mean, she only develop, not only develops those players, but those players want to go and play for her. And I just don't understand why, you know, you know, if you want to be a star in your own right, you know what I mean? Like, you want to be a star in your own right, I think you stay at your own school and basically win, your, win a championship there. But in the forming a mega power team over a mega power team, that could be a little bit of an issue. I, and I have a little issue with that. But um, but I but I think the reason why these players go out there and transfer to like a place like Sofia Lake, of course, to play girls basketball, is because not only you're playing for a successful coach in Michelle Jackson Marshall, who also has a state championship in her pedigree, but also you know you want to make sure that you want to be the best player you can be, and you want to play with the coach that you really like, and. That's one of the reasons why players like to come over there, you know, and I use Lathrop as a perfect example in girls' basketball of that situation when it comes to having successful players, you know what I mean? Like, um, you know, like girls like Antoinette Miller, Sabrina Cotton, all transferring over there. And even, um, and even, I gotta remember West Bloomfield's player who was very good, and then she transferred over there to Southfield Lathrop. I mean, I don't know. Oh, Sydney Davis, that's the one, yep. Sydney Davis also. She played three years at West Bloomfield before transferring her senior year to play at Southfield Lathrop because all those players had something in common. They played AU ball on the same team as, and of course coached by Michelle Jackson Marshall. And that, I think, is one of the reasons why Southfield Lathrop is successful, successful every year is because of the transfer rule. You know, I'm kind of surprised that you know, the MHA, I'm a little disappointed the MHA has not cracked down on this. I mean, like, I mean, but, you know, it is what it is. I mean, they're they're complying to the rules, and it is what it is. Another school that I'm surprised about, I mean, like, to be very sensitive, Oak Park. When you look at the Knights, I mean, like, um, of course, Oak Park, of course, Greg Carter was brought in there, coached football team in the BDAD, brought in a coach named Brian Tipton. He coached at, um, Detroit Cody for the boys' basketball team. He took three of his own players from Detroit Cody to Oak Park. Now, they had to sit out a semester. One of those players included Kevon Fuller. Of course, Fuller, we all know, is having an incredible junior campaign at Night Valley. But, um, you know, you put him together, Roddy Scales, and then they brought in um, a couple other ones from River Rouge um, was one of them. And... Um, you know, Oak Park could be a very, very scary team. You know what I mean? I think when the, with the emergence of the of bringing in a coach, a tr- like an AU type of coach like Tipton is, is it's, it's a huge impact. And you got other transfers, like Howard McKinnon, he transferred from Southfield to Oak Park, um, basically. Now, I know the academic standards are different in every school. You know what I mean? But... um. But um, Howard McKinnis, he's a good player. You know, a very good, very talented player. I mean, like, but um, he, he, I mean, like, when you look at this transfer rule here, I think it's a tough situation. And, of course, you know, he got in the girls' basketball. Um, we got Diane Jones over there at Oak Park. She brought in a couple of her kids from, um, I mean, like, who used to be at Detroit Renaissance. Um, of course, Jones was a successful coach already at Detroit Renaissance. And, you know, and then um, she retired for a year then came back to coach and be the assistant AD over at Oak Park. You know, I'm very curious to see how that that goes. And also, let's go to the track and field circuit. Of course, Oak Park brought in um, Art Giles from from um, Detroit Mumford. And you look at what he's done. He's got an own AU track and field team over there at Oak Park. And look at what he's did in, the, in his first two years over there at Nightmare. Oak Park did not have a true track and field team until he took over. And Oak Park was second in the, Oak Park won the state in girls um track last year. It's shocking. 
and they're one of the favorites in the boys this year, in both boys and girls. So it's going to be very interesting with Oak Park, especially in track and field, because all those kids are doing track and field year round over there. And that is something, that is why the AAU circuit, I think, has been very, very successful to Oak Park. You know, and I know they develop their players over there. They do. But I think the AAU circuit has really helped both programs at Oak Park and Southfield Lake to, to be very, very successful. And it's showing. It's showing that they're getting all the hype, getting all the media. You know what I mean? I mean, like, it is showing. You know, academic standards are very good at both schools. I think they're very good at both schools. You know, but it is what it is when you look at it. I mean, like, um, when you look at the AAU circuit, of course, Kobe Bryant said, you know, and he mentioned, you know, that the AAU system's not working because they're not developing players. You know, there's some things in his statement that I disagree with what they're doing over at Oak Park and Lathrop, of course. They're developing their players, you know. You notice Kevon Fuller's had him. He struggled a little bit his junior year. He's improved a lot. His sophomore year, he's improved a lot in his junior year. Antoinette Miller, now as a junior, I mean, like, she struggled. I thought she struggled her sophomore year. She, I mean, even she's starting a, she's starting Deja Church, a point guard is very, very good. You go along with the Bellow Twins. I mean, like, I think the AU coaches do develop their players quite well. I mean, like, they'll get them ready, I think, for each game. I mean, like, also, high school coaches do a very good job at it. You know what I mean? A lot of coaches, I think some of the things I agree with Kobe Bryant, but there's some of the things I disagree with Kobe Bryant. And the things I do agree with it is, one, I think that parents do run the asylum a little bit, you know, but it's very dangerous. It's a very dangerous situation. I ain't going to even go there. I ain't going to even go there. And then... It's the second thing, here's the thing I disagree with. I think that AU coaches do develop players to be very good players. They do develop them to be very, very good players. And also you got high school coaches who also develop very good players. You know what I mean? It's, I mean, it does take a while to develop your game at a younger age. I understand that. But, you know, I personally have had experience when I played um, Special Olympics basketball, you know. You know, I had to watch a lot of TV. You know what I mean? I had to watch a lot of TV to develop my game around those type of players. You know what I mean? I, I watched a lot of Rasheed Wallace. I've watched a lot of them, a lot of, of them, how he does his game. And I tried to pattern my game around his game. But uh, sometimes, it, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, you know. And, you know, it, you're playing around with European players, you know. that's I guess that's the reason why I'm... Um, Spurs coach Greg Popovich has been very successful. It's because of the um, of that European um, European impact that they bring. Um, I look at um, of course um, I look at around like you know Manu Ginobili. I mean like um, you know, but I still think American basketball players can be successful. He said the AU system needs to be fixed. You know, there's some parts of it that needs to be fixed. But I also think there's some of them that, um, you know, problem is, you know, how are you going to change a kid? How are you going to change a kid? Because if he's all that, um, if he's all that, you know what I mean? If he's legit, you know, he's legit. And if he's not legit and he has a bad attitude, he or she has a bad attitude about the game, then then you're going to have a problem. I've noticed that with, um, I've noticed that with um, players that I've seen around the league. And there are those that are good players, good people. And if you're a snot nosed kid, then you I already tell I can already tell right there that what you're gonna be. And if you're a good, honest kid, you know what I mean, who's willing to learn the game, you know, who's willing to learn the game to know that you're gonna be a successful player, not only on the court, also academically, and also in life, because that's how um successful that's how successful you can be as a basketball player as we um end in the year that's a strong message that I send to those who are willing to learn the game of basketball is you know I mean there's some things I do agree with Kobe Bryant there's some things I disagree with Kobe Bryant 
my personal thoughts about it is, you know what, um, I'm going to leave it at best. You know, you can also check my um, blog at Inside the OA, get my thoughts personally on um, on the a on on the AU circuit. Um, it's a very interesting read. Um, you can go with that Sammy Termina at um blogspot.com. Um, also you can also take a look at my blog, The Dragon's Den, of course, updating Lake Orion season as well, heading into that. Also into my blog as well. All right, now everybody here. Um, we got some very interesting um. Got some interesting tournaments um, coming up. Next subject, next topic here. I'm um, going to recap the Rochester Invitational, of course, and also recap the um, the Motor City Round Ball Classic. It was a good day for OAA teams in, um, bo- and, um, in both boys and girls at the Round Ball Classic Tournament. So we'll carry it on here. Um, coming up next break here on OAA Now. Prescription drug abuse is a national epidemic. The new in way to obtain drugs is through parents' or grandparents' medicine chests. Removing prescriptions from your cabinet is the best way to keep drugs out of the hands of our young people. We've got to work together to protect our teens, our seniors, and our environment. Clean out your medicine cabinet today. Please participate in Operation Medicine Cabinet and drop off your unwanted or expired prescriptions at one of our law enforcement drop-off sites in Oakland County. We can't ignore this situation anymore. Welcome back to OA Now, same Terry blogger of the Dragon's Den, also blogger of Inside the OA, and one of the hosts between Terminas on one TV. Um, you can also visit my Twitter page. I'm at Saginaw Bay. You can ask me any questions that I'm um, related to the, any of the OA teams, um, and I will gladly get back to you guys on that. Um, a lot of, we're going to recap, of course, two tournaments, of course, that happened. Also, the North Bell tournament as well. Um, of course, Troy Athens' girls basketball team was in that tournament. And then, um, you know, as we head into January, of course, we got we start up girls. Ba- we start out the basketball games. Of course, some of the major games coming up in the week will be Lake Orion Clarkson Friday night. That'll be a good one. You got Southfield Lathrop against Oak Park on Tuesday. Big one in girls basketball. Also Harrison against um, Harrison against Harper Woods. Harper Woods a very good team there. And then of course you got um, of course you got. Some of the most interesting got Seahome playing Royal Oak and girls. That ought to be that's a tricky game, I think, for Mackenzie Harbour and against the Ravens because I don't think they I don't think Seahome's gonna have an answer inside for Allison Karpinski. Um, but um, like I said, you know what I mean. But let's recap. Of course, the Rochester tournament. We're gonna go with the boys first. Um, you know when I look at that tournament, when I look at that classic tournament, um, you know not only to first, I wasn't impressed with Brandon nor Yale's boys basketball team at all. I just didn't think that they were that that solid, neither of those two teams. I didn't think that they were they – were, they didn't play good at all. I just didn't think – even though Yale won that game 38-30, I just really wasn't impressed with that one. And then, of course, the second game of the day was Plymouth and Notre Dame prep. Um, that was a good game, I'm going to admit. It was a really good game between um, the Wildcats and the Fighting Irish. Um Plymouth ended up winning that game. There was a reason why um, you got to give them. Um, I know Plymouth has to go to Oxford later in the year, and that's going to be a tough game for the Wildcats when you look at playing Plymouth. Plymouth's very athletic. They're long, lengthy, solid. You know, you got a very, very interesting team. I like this Plymouth team. They're going to be a contender. I think it would. they'd probably be a sleeper, I think, in the state right now. But we'll see what happens with Plymouth. Um especially when they go play at Oxford. They beat a very good Notre Dame prep team. Of course, Notre Dame prep has got to play. Um, Notre Dame prep has got to play Farmington, which is going to be a very interesting game coming up around there. And then um, the next game, the next boys game, of course, we're going to mention, of course, was Oxford. The Wildcats unbeaten still um, behind their big four of them. Um, Mason Byers, Jamal Thomas, Connor Elzerman, and um, – and, um, Del, Delvin Alexander, um, those four had a very successful game against Warren Woods Tower. I didn't think Warren Woods Tower was that good in a sense. I mean, but still, a win's a win for Stepan Henning and his team. I think right now, Henning's best win right now 
looks to be that game at Lake Orion when they um when they um it, when they use that third quarter to beat the Dragons in that one. I mean, like, but still, it is what it is in that one here. And then of course, put the girls at the Motor City at the um, Falcon Invitational. Of course, Rochester won their first game of the year, knocking off um Warren Woods Tower. Huge win for Adam Sheldon. I thought um Powell Bazero played very well in that game. She shot. She did well. She shot threes very, very well. I mean, like, um, but the problem, Rochester still has this problem, is Shakira Hodges, their, their power forward, still gets into foul trouble. You know, I really was not impressed with, um, with, with what Hodges does. I mean, like, but, but, um, but I think the key to that team, and I'm going to be honest with you, and, I'll bet you not a lot of Rochester people are going to like me over this. I think Zoe Schultz has to score because the last two games, Schultz has not scored against Lake Orion and then against Warren Woods Tower. I thought she was she didn't look good against the Dragons. And against Woods Tower, Warren Woods Tower, I thought, you know, she looked all right. She played better. But, uh, but in that first half, I thought, personally, Rochester did not play well in that one. They kind of let Woods Tower just shoot on them. And you can't do that. You know what I mean? If you if 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 you let a team shoot on you, you're gonna you're asking for disaster. And I thought Rochester was asking disaster for disaster way too much in that first half. They limited Warren was tower to seven points in that second half. I mean, like still it's still a huge win for Rochester, you know, for their first win, but you know, the schedule's still dying. You still gotta play Adams again. In that crosstown showdown, Oakland University, then you got to play the rest of the blue, you know, and that's not gonna be especially when you got Oak Park, who's been a up and down team. You know, we'll go over Oak Park in a minute, um, but um, you know, you got to play Seahome one more time. You got to play, um, you still got to play. You know, you got Gross Farmington teams you should beat, um, and you got um, and of course you got Royal Oak, who's not a bad team either. Of course, um. Brian Spott has got a very, very interesting team over there. Of course, they're led by Allison Karpinski, Brady, and um, Brandy Horan, um, Bailey Horan. Um, very two, two solid players, I think, over at Royal Oak. Um, another game here we're going to mention is Oxford against Notre Dame Prep. You know, a lot of hype surrounds Oxford. A lot of hype. But when you stall the ball for about three minutes, I have a huge problem with that because when you look at that game... I mean, Sky Donaldson had had a nice game. Jessica Murphy was shut down. I gotta give Notre Dame Prep a lot of credit for going to box and one on her, on Jessica Murphy, of course. Um, but with Oxford, I don't think Oxford's that good. You know what I mean? I really don't, because you play seven, eight deep. You know what I mean? I understand you play. You're not deep at all, and the schedule for Oxford is not very friendly. They gotta play Stony Creek. They still gotta play when they get in the league. They gotta play Orion, Troy. You know those two teams are going to pressure them. Bloomby Hills will pressure them, I think. Um, but um, also Avondale, I think, could do it. But but when you stall for about three minutes, it's you know if you're playing against a team that's going to really pressure you, you know what I mean. And I expect Stony Creek to do that, especially because the difference in that game was Stony Creek did not have Maria Zandi in that game against um against Oxford. And I think that'll be a huge difference right there. And um, is Zandy's presence? I think it's going to give going to give huge problems for Bandis. You know, when I look at it here, I still think that sh- I still think that um, Maria Zandy. I think personally should have gotten a um, Maria Zandy should have gotten. I mean, like a um, she probably get a scholarship for soccer, but I but if she would have got a scholarship for basketball, it would not surprise me. I still think she's a better athlete. Than um, Cheryl and Bandis. I think Zandy's a better athlete than Bandis, personally. You know, I still, when I look at the guards in the OA, in the white this year, I think that, I think Hannah Hamay's better. I think that um, Rachel Grecky's better. You know, I think Amanda Moss is better than Bandis right now. I mean, like, I will take the Morton sisters. I think they're better than Bandis. You know what I mean? I mean, like, but, um, but Bandis right now is perfect right now for, um, for Oxford right now, you know, you got your, of course, you got Murphy and you got Donaldson. Of course, Murphy's 
of course, you know, a lot of people look at Murphy. She's she's a good player. She, she's a good player. I mean, like, there's no doubt about it. She and Donaldson are two very good players for Steve Emmert. But I really was not impressed with Bandis at all in that one. Of course, Chris, and of course, you got Samantha Maseki who shot um, who shot a three point in that game against Prep. Um, you know, I kind of really was not impressed with what I saw with Oxford against Notre Dame Prep. Of course, Notre Dame Prep did not have two of their better players. One was on vacation, and the other one was hurt. But you know, still, it's an interesting win. Notre Dame Prep still got to play Stony Creek coming up, and that's not going to be an easy game for them. Um, but Oxford still got to play. They play Stony Creek first, and then well, that'll be an interesting matchup between them and um Stony coming up. Um, and then of course, um, of course, I forgot to mention in the boys. You know what I mean? Before, I forgot to mention Rochester Stony Creek in the Falcon Invitational. Of course, John Poston Cole is the real deal. I mean, my God, twenty nine points, seven threes. I mean, goodness gracious, he just he just lit up Rochester like crazy. I mean, he's part of that. Um, for for um, at least everybody in Stony Creek I know can shoot. I'm just going to say it right now by Steve Norgrove's team. Everybody on that team can shoot. I mean, you got Arnold can shoot. Logan Arnold can shoot. Scott Reader can shoot. Scott Vider can shoot. Um, you got um, Jack Allen can shoot. Eric Jojen back, of course, he plays the five, you know, but um, he can shoot. You know what I mean? Stony Creek, I think, personally, is the next modified version of... Troy Athens, known as the three point happies. You know, so that's something that um I was very impressed with Stony Creek is they got all a lot of chemistry. It would not surprise me if Stony Creek challenges Oxford and West Bloomfield in the blue division. When I look at Rochester, of course, very young, very inexperienced, you know, it's gonna be a long year for John Pleasant and his Falcons. They're I think they're gonna struggle in the um white, and that's not gonna be a good thing heading into that heading into that um Heading into the season, especially can you open up with North Farmington? You know, that's not gonna be an easy game at all in that one. And of course, let's go back to the girls' basketball course. Um West Bloomfield knocking off um West Bloomfield against um Yale. You know what I mean? I was very impressed with um Charlika Stubbs. Stubbs a very good player. She likes to get in the passing lane. You know, I think West Bloomfield has found the replacement for Deja Jenkins and Stubbs. I mean, like um She's very good. I mean, like, I would say right now, you know, she's at an early stage of where Deja Dinkins was at. But um, I think she'll be there for the long haul. And um, you got Rachel Harness shooting threes. Crystal Glass, a good player. Taylor Pierce, solid for Zach Hilbers. I mean, I mean, Yale, Yale was not very good. I just think Yale was very good. But I think West Booth, I thought West Booth made a lot of mistakes. I mean, as well in that game. Um, but still... Zach Hilbers found a way to win that game, and um, they're going to go on and play. They still got to play Harrison before they open up league play. And that's not going to be an easy situation right there heading into that one. Of course, got the Motor City Round Ball Classic um, recap, and of course, Southfield lost. Um, they beat Howard City, Indiana, um, the boys, and then they lost a tough one, Detroit East English Prep, 90-78. The Blue Jays, of course, they're solid. They got two very good guards. How I mean, and um, Murray Hardy. Um, they got Isaiah Green in the interior. It'd be a good matchup, I think, when they play Lake Orion. Um, it's an interesting matchup because, like, um, we'll see what happens in that one. Um, but Southfield's solid. Southfield, Lathrop, of course, losing a tough one, sixty-one fifty to um, Detroit Mumford. Fred John, twenty-nine points. Good player, good rebounder. He can rebound. He can shoot. He can play the. He can play well in that one too. Um, Oak Park, of course, um, they won and they they destroyed some people this year in that tournament. Of course, they're led by Kevon Fuller. Of course, I mentioned him earlier in the in the second subject. We talked to AU. Um, he's a solid player. Of course, you got Rodney Scales who did not play, and you got Howard McKinnis. Of course, very good guard for them. You know what I mean? Like, um, I think I expect Oak Park to do some damage. One, I, it would not surprise me. Oak Park is the best boys basketball team in the state, in the league this year. It would not surprise me. Even I would say Oak Park right now is a better team than North Farmington, and that's saying a lot right now when you look at that team. Um, and of course, um, Troy lost to to Ashland, Ohio. Of course, Gary Fralix lost his son, coach at Ashland, Ohio. Tough loss there for Coach Fralick. You know what I mean? Adams, of course, beating him. Um, 
Detroit Consortium, 71-57. That was an impressive win. Zach's little, Spencer Littleson, of course, played huge in that game. Um, and then when you look at them, um, and then, of course, you got um, And then, of course, you got um, You know, and then um, you go look at the girls' side of things. You got Oak Park's girls, of course, going um, two, one and two in that stretch. They had a... They beat Flint Southwestern County, but ended up losing the last two games. Lost to Trenton, and then they lost a tough one the other night. So it, it's going to be an interesting. Oak Park's an up and down team for Diane Jones. Southfield, Jamie Gens's team won a t- won an interesting game over McBain, led by Chris Linda Foe. Um, give them props there, of course. Um, Southfield late they're going two and zero in their two games of the Motor City Round Ball Classic. Beat the beat Chicago um, Cremonte in overtime. Um, and then, of course, they beat them. East Central Chicago, they destroyed them in that game. Um, also, you got, and also, you know, I was very impressed with them. Harrison, Harrison, led by Tim McLash, of course, overcoming Kristen Nelson's foul troubles, winning that game over Chicago Cremante. It's a huge win for Tim McLash for what um, he wants to do over there at that program. And um, and they're solid over there. Of North Farrington's girls, of course, won a um, one over there as well. Of course, they're led by um, Megan Carter. Of course, Megan Carter coming back from injury. She's going to Kent State next year. So that that was an interesting um, scenario there. And, of course, you know, that was the round ball classics. And then you got Clarkston. Of course, they played a um, individual. They played Ann Arbor Skyline at Clarkston. Um, their boys, you know, I thought, you know, their boys are solid. You know what I mean? Andrew Meyer's a good player. You got um, Foster Lawyer. I was... You know, he's a good player. He's going to be a good player. But Mira Canada's the heart and soul of that team. I mean, like, but you got Josh Nesbitt is a very good player. You got Chewins backing him up. Clarkson goes 10 deep. I mean, when you look at a Dan Fife team, you know they're going to go 10 deep. So that's something that um I anticipate and I expect what happens over there for Clarkson. It's a huge, huge, they got a couple games coming up. They got to play Pontiac. I forgot to mention Pontiac. Pontiac lost a tough one. Over there, but also, but Ben Kelso, I think, has got that team going in the right direction when you look at it. Of course, Avondale earlier in the December um, one beat Royal Oak pretty handily, you know, led by um, Caleb Hogens, who was a very good player right there um, for the Yellow Jackets. Um, but also, um, you look at um, Pontiac, the Phoenix, you know, they had a tough loss there. Their girls, it was bad for them. They played Harper Woods, got blown out pretty handily there. So we'll see what happens over there. And also on Clarkson's girls, of course, they beat Skyline. Ann Arbor Skyline. Skyline's not very good. But um but Davin but Erica Davenport had a, had another good game. She had twenty one points in that game. It'll be an interesting game, especially because they play Wall Lake Western and they got that they got that game with Orion. I think that Orion game's gonna be a very close game in that one. You know, the key in that game, I think, is for the for the Dragon Ladies in that one is can the Dragons shut down Erica Davenport? You know, they, she had 21 last year in that game against the Dragons. But um, we'll see what happens heading into the um, heading into um, this week's games in January. Of course, the round ball classic's done. You got the um, Balkan invite done. You got a couple of their individual games done. You know, there's a couple. There's, you got a lot of good games coming up this week. You know, I encourage you all to um, attend some of them, watch some great basketball, especially around the OA. Um, we'll just see what happens heading into, um, heading into, um, this week. And, um, I'm, I'm going to sign off here for this week here at the show of Now. I'm Sammy Terramina. Take care and good night, everybody. OAA Now is produced at Orion Neighborhood Television, Lake Orion's community media outlet. To learn more about ONTV, visit our website at www.orionontv.org or call us at 248-393-1060.